powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 530 News on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Russ Riesinger. Janelle has the night off with Montana's June primary election now less than four months away. Things are already heating up on the campaign trail. Case in point, Montana's race for governor where incumbent Democrat Steve Bullock is term limited after eight years in office. Well, two Democrats are vying for their party's nomination, Lieutenant Governor Mike Cooney and newcomer Whitney Williams. MTN's Jay Cohn brings us a closer look tonight at the race behind the scenes where the money hits the road. All need to do Whitney Williams burst onto the Montana political scene this fall when she announced her bid for governor. While she's a new face, her family ties run deep in Montana politics. Father Pat Williams represented Montana in the U.S. House for nearly two decades. And her mom, Carol, served in the state legislature for eight years and has the honor of becoming the state's first female Senate Majority Leader. So it's really no surprise that Whitney's raking in the cash for her bid at the governor's chair. Over the last three months of 2019, the Williams campaign raised $439,000, with donations coming in from 29 states. Nearly three-fourths of her total, though, comes from outside Montana. $107,000 from California, $87,000 from Washington State. Her Montana donations totaled $104,000. By comparison, Lieutenant Governor Mike Cooney had raised 451000 by year's end, about 80% of that from Montana donors. While his donations have come in from 44 states, no other state really stands out. His California donations total 17000 accounting for just 4% of his campaign cash. Of the 451000 Cooney has raised so far, he's spent 273000 and begins 2020 with $178,500 cash on hand. For Williams, of her $439,000 total, she has spent $186,000 and starts 2020 with $253,000 cash on hand. So it appears both Williams and Cooney are well positioned for the push ahead towards the June 2nd primary. The big question now is which candidate can create traction with the voters. The next campaign finance reports are due out March 20th. We'll keep you posted on how the fundraising battle shapes up. In Billings, Jay Cohn reporting for MTN News. All right, thank you, Jay. And both Democratic Governor hopefuls will be in Billings next Wednesday night to take part in their first debate of the campaign season. MSUB, MSUB's Petro Theater is the site for the uh, event that's hosted by the MSUB College Democrats and the Yellowstone County Democratic Central Committee. It's a 90-minute forum that begins at 6 p.m. and it is open to the public. Well, today, the Department of Interior announced more than $170 million in conservation funding for states and tribes to reclaim and repurpose abandoned coal mines. Each year, the abandoned mine land reclamation grants are allocated to the 25 coal producing states and three tribes. And this year, Wyoming was awarded the most funding at just under $36 million. Now, Montana will receive $3,326,000, while the Crow tribe will take in nearly $400. $158,000 as one of the three tribes to be awarded money. U.S. Senator John Barrasso of Wyoming was pleased with today's news, saying that we've caught up on abandoned mine land payments to Wyoming. Washington is finally living up to its obligation to the people of our state. Barrasso went on to say even while facing challenging conditions, Wyoming coal is still dominating national production. Wyoming Senator Mike Enzi said Wyoming has always been a proud leader in coal production and it's great to see our state getting the money it deserves. Well, the Montana Department of Justice website lists close to 150 missing persons. And today a newly formed task force met here in Billings. It's been a concern for decades now and a bill in legislature last year led to the Missing Indigenous Persons Task Force. The Attorney General has appointed representatives from every tribe in Montana. A lot of the talk today was about the search and rescue resources available and how to best use them. Well, I think it needs to be a multifaceted approach in that each government needs to recognize what it can bring to the table and what it can share and how we can work together mutually to address this issue beneficially for everyone involved. And so that no matter where a person goes missing, we have resources that we can call on either from the federal government, the state government, or the tribal government to respond to every missing person's case. U.S. Attorney Kurt Almy was one of the speakers this morning. That task force will hold a community meeting at City College. Uh, it'll be tonight starting at 6. 
All right, turning to the weather now, Chief Forecaster Bob McGuire is here. Bob, we still got some watches and warnings and more snow possible. Oh, that's huh? going to be the case. We got a little bit in the Billings area today. They wound up with about half an inch, but let me show you, show you some other places that did a little better. Gardner, 5.5 inches of snow. Red Lodge, 5. Bozeman had 4.4. Belgrade, 4 inches. And uh, near Phillipsburg, they also had 4 inches of snow. But check out and look what's happening. We still have an avalanche uh, threat tonight, especially for the Bridger, Gallatin, and Madison ranges. Nearly a foot of snow has fallen up there on top of a weak base. So really, avalanche danger is very likely, especially in those areas. Plus, look at this. We have winter weather advisories, winter storm warnings, and you can see the various snowfall amounts. But I think I want to point out over there in the Bear Tooth, still looking at 12 to 24 inches of snow. Billings no longer in a winter weather advisory. That shifted south down into uh, Wyoming and parts of Bighorn County. Two to five inches of snow there, but it looks like for Billings, our stuff's pretty much over with for tonight. Uh, we have a slight chance for some additional snow, but nothing that'll accumulate. And look for some more heavier snow out in the southwest. We'll have more on that in a few more minutes, Russ. All right, thank you, Bob. Ever wondered how long you should warm up your vehicle before heading out on those cold mornings? MTN forecaster Asia Ray explores that question in tonight's WeatherWise. Here's the debate. Do you warm up your car? And how long do you keep it running before driving off? It depends on the temperature, but usually at least five to 10 minutes. Make sure that you're um, defrost systems are putting out good warm air. Scott McLean owns AA Transmission in Helena. He has over 30 years of experience working on vehicles. He says both newer and older vehicles should be warmed up. All vehicles warm up with what's called a thermostat and your thermostat is set to be able to be closed until the coolant is warmed up enough, then it opens up the thermostat, then it runs through the system. Scott says if you just warm your engine up. You haven't actually warmed up your differentials or your transfer cases. So even after doing that, it's a very good idea to at least when you start leaving, go slow for a couple blocks. According to an article published last year in Popular Mechanics, this might be especially true for older cars that still have carbureted engines. But car manufacturers and U.S. Department of Energy say most modern vehicles only need around 30 seconds of idle time before driving off. They add that engines warm up faster if you are driving and that extended idle waste gas and pollutes the environment. McLean says there are other factors at play, including clean your hood off because the second that cold snow hits your windshield, it's gonna instantly fog up again. So you're, you know, you start heading down the road, you get 20 miles an hour, it kicks all that snow, then you can't see. Scott says if your engine oil isn't warm enough, you start turning more RPMs, your bearings are not lubricated enough in your engine per se. And it's also hard on transmission parts because you have inner workings and the fluid is not circulating correctly through those systems. The decision to warm your car up before driving off is yours, but never leave your car unattended or unsecure. I'm weather forecaster Asia Ray, and now you're more weather wise. Well, the Department of Energy says you should also check the law where you live. Some states you can face fines for unnecessary idling. 2017 Montana state code was amended to allow a person to leave their vehicle running unattended as long as it's secured from rolling onto the road. All right, there is more news from across our state on the MTN 9 o'clock news. Our four-legged friends ready to run the race to the sky this weekend. We're going to hear about the history of Montana's premier sled dog race. Join us for that and more on the MTN statewide news on the CW. But first, still to come on tonight's 530 News, a project six years in the making is now reality. We're going to check out 120 years worth of student reporting at the University of Montana. And in sports, Scott catches up with Montana wrestler Parker, Parker Phileas, now holding his own at Purdue. You're watching MTN News with Janelle Slade and Russ Riesinger. Storm Tracker Weather with Bob McGuire and Sports with Scott Breen. This is the 530 News on Q2, Montana's news leader.